what happened in the case. So, you know here, no light bulb. No light bulb, yeah? But we didn't have a budget for graphics, so that's why there's no light bulb. But more importantly, it doesn't say idea, concept, or anything like that. Because if you look at the evidence yeah, of innovations, you can very rarely track them back to the original idea or concept. And there are big legal battles and historical battles about who invented the jet engine and who invented this. And it's all great fun, yeah, and jingoistic stuff, waving flags and everything. Big court cases over years, and often they're not resolved. Yeah, because often it's not a focal idea or concept and then something grows from it. It's the coming together, a sort of confluence of connections, which often at very similar times, albeit on different parts of the planet, yeah, come together and people realise there's a potential to do something new and interesting. So it's these connections which are important. And for that reason, the sort of verb, if you like, that we've used is not about idea generation or creativity. It's about search. Sometimes scanning, searching, I can't what you call it. It's been actively looking for what's possible. Yeah? And part of that's technology, part of its markets, part of its other things. Okay? So the key thing in this is a bundle of ways of trying to identify initially more sources of innovation and then to look for patterns or connections. Because most real innovations are the coming together of several streams. Okay? It's not a focal uh, demographic or a focal piece of technology often it's several things coming together which together is the combination that creates often the novelty and the value okay so the sort of the verb there is about searching so uh, examples again not going to go around this but basically these are different sources plural of innovation and often most real organizations consider one or two they might talk to their suppliers yeah they might have an internal knowledge management system or something, but they very rarely exhaust or explore the whole range of things. Uh, some are more, yeah, inspiration's still there, it happens. But the trick, even with inspiration, is being sensitive to, so what? What can we do about it? And it's true, a lot of innovations, you can track back to an um, accident, serendipity. Yeah? But the really interesting thing is, how did those guys then realise there was potentially something that was interesting from that, because most people walk past these things. Yeah? So you know, right from invention of electricity and you know, vulcanised rubber, a lot of these were accidents in the sense people were fiddling around and something happens that surprised them, and then they have to make sense of it. What could we do with that? Yeah? So the guys who uh, discovered vulcanised rubber were looking for ways of making latex more stable, so it was a search, a focused search, but the way they did it in terms of spilling it on the hot plate was an accident. But the really interesting story is they missed the opportunity. They think, couldn't figure out what the point was. They changed its properties, but so what? What can we do with that? Next. Yeah? And it requires whole new people to come along and say, that has different properties. What could we do with that? Yeah? And you often get that disconnect because people aren't sensitised to even serendipity. What could happen next? You know, the example of electricity, you know, the first dry cells, batteries, like we've got in all our machines there. What were the first applications of dry, uh, not dry cells, wet cells, batteries? Inv invented in France, I think it's the last invention ever in France, was, um, <laughs> well, edit, edit that one out now. <laughs> but the, uh, what, what were the first applications? The people who actually invented the first wet cells, first batteries. What do you think it was? Was it electrification of the uh, lights? No, they came a century later, something. It was circuses, electrocuting people at circuses for almost 22 years or something. They would take around big packs of these cells and people from the audience come along and be electrocuted. Yeah? That was it. Nobody could figure out what to do with it. And so often these sort of innovations come along and, well, innovations, these sort of, and people just don't know. So a lot of innovation is, is being sensitive to what does it do and what could we do with that? And there's often a big disconnect and often it's a different individual, a different group or a different company that realises the potential of what's possible. So what we're trying to do is break that disconnection. Um, uh, yeah, users, innovators, a big deal at the moment. There's lots of tools and techniques um, to try to um, internalise, particularly things like online communities, trying to get expertise from those and internalise those and capture some of that knowledge, because yeah? often people participate on a voluntary um, basis. Uh, Bob, 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 some accidents we spoke about. Yeah, um, watching others, ethnographic studies, a lot of the big consultancies outfits, that's what they do. You write a big check and they say, you want to innovate? Yes, what do you want? Give us a brief. And then they go watch people. Yeah? Like sort of you know, ethnographic 
anthropologists. They look around and watch people in their sort of natural environment, whether it be an office or a, you know, a nursery or whatever. Or well, like Samsung and an iPhone? <laughs> Can you elaborate? I mean, we're going to talk about that later, so we don't want to start a fight too early, but um, <laughs> it is a bit like religion and football teams, isn't it? Uh, how, 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 how do you mean? The Samsung copied the technology of the iPhone, the, the screens, the... No, I'm not talking... No, no, okay, good point. Okay, I get what you're saying. Okay, I'm not talking about... We're we'll talking about imitation later. I'm not talking about imitation, legally or otherwise. We'll discuss that in, in the next session, actually. Um, but we're talking about actually observing people, how they work, what they do, yeah, and how they might use an innovation in a real environment, so rather than in a lab or something. So, uh, observation. Um, Recombinant innovation, a tedious term, that means it's not my diagram, tedious term, it's called many other things, architectural innovation and all that sort of thing. Basically it means what we've been talking about, seeing these connections. Yeah? A lot of innovations, I include things like the iPhone, are not new, you can literally decompose it into say, well that's 10 years old, operating system 24 years old, that screen somebody else developed, those chipsets are developed by ARM, they're built in Taiwan, but together, yeah, it's something really quite clever. Now that's a, a physical example of that, but there are many other examples where innovation is this connection, seeing these new novel connections. And that's, I don't care what you call it, recombinant's a, a bit of a clumsy term, but a lot of innovation are these connections, seeing connections that others don't see, yeah, and then figuring out how you can create value from that. So expand the horizon beyond the sort of, it's all about ideas or R&D or creativity. And there are lots of techniques which we're not going to go into, they're all available, as we say, on the website. Um, yeah, about the website, by the way, uh, it's not commercial break because the website doesn't generate any income. That's a bad move, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> but it's an open site, as you probably know if you had a look. Um, you've got the links and the, and the URL there. But we've, the tool kit's getting bigger and bigger, and we've got about 100 tools now. And basically, you can say, okay, I'm trying to figure out how I search for innovation, or I'm trying to figure out how I forecast, trying to figure out how I work with partners. And you can then begin to identify clusters of tools that might help you do that. Okay? But I repeat, without a process, tools don't work very well, and without organizational climate, the process doesn't work very well. But it's useful to say, well, how do I actually 